Hello, people. Welcome back uh, to the X64 Linux assembly language series. Today, we're going to do some more assembly language programming to open a file and uh, read its contents. I think we're going to get as far as opening the file and figuring out what size that it is. I think that'll be good enough for today. It turns out that uh, reading a file, um, there's more uh, instructions than you would possibly uh, than you probably would expect. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a fourth uh, directory here. We're going to go into our fourth directory, and we're also going to copy our previous program into that directory. So now we have a main.asm file. Okay, so then we will open that main.asm file, and we're going to start creating a function called read file. So we're going to have read file, uh, read uh, the contents of a file into a buffer, and return the buffer. Uh, the inputs will be rax, file name, and outputs will be rax, file contents buffer. Okay, so in, in, let's see, this will be a read file. And we'll just put a couple comments in here uh, as to the kinds of things that we have to accomplish. So we're going to have to open the file. Uh, we're going to have to, uh, let's see, seek to the end of file. Save the file size. Then we will, OK, so then we'll do some temporary stuff. So we'll have a note here. Uh, the following is temporary. And we will convert um, file size to string. Print the file size. There we go. And then we will just have a return, and that will be the end of our read file function. So the first thing that we've got to do is open the file. And we can do that by looking at the instructions here for our system calls. We can open a file by giving uh, rex the number 2, which will tell the um, which will tell the operating system that we want to use this uh, to the open system call. And we'll give it a file name. We'll give it some flags and a mode. And I believe, let's see, let's see. I think the flags will just be zero because that will be a read only, I think, a zero. And then the mode will be, let's see, the mode will give it, let's see, let's look that up real quick. So man two open. Uh, let's see, what what do we want for the mode? The flags must include one of the following access modes. Read, oh, read only, write only, read write. We're going to want read only, which I believe is zero. Then the file mode will be do, 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 do. create directory exclude Which one do we want? Don't really want create. Let's see. Directory desync. I think what we want. Let's see. What do we want for the mode? Let's go back up to the top. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, the mode is. Optional, but I bet there's some kind of default that it uses. File description. Yeah, let's just let's just say that that's optional. 
and we'll just use the flags that we want. Okay. So we're going to do, let's see, a person gives us the file name. And so in order to open the file, um, rex will have to be two and the file name will have to be moved to rdi. So let's do that. So let's move into rdi, rax, um, set file name. Then we will uh, move into rax uh, two, which is uh, open. And then we will move into rsi, the flags, which should be zero. So we're actually going to do zor, rsi, rsi, um, o read only. Then we can do a syscall, and that should open the file for us. And what will happen on return is it will give us a file descriptor, which is an int in rax. So in fact, it should tell us this. The return value of open is a file descriptor, a small non-negative integer. And what we're going to do here is typically what you'd want to do is uh, check for an error. But uh, for simplicity's sake, we're not going to do any error checking um, for this read file thing. That's kind of an exercise left to, left to the reader. Um, essentially, you're looking for a um, something that is less than zero, or probably less than or equal to zero. So here we go, uh, or less than zero. So uh, we're not checking for errors. So then we need to seek to the end of the file, and there is a call that we can do called lseek, which will allow us to seek to the end of the file which is uh, system call number eight. So we're going to do that, and we're gonna to have to give it the file descriptor in RDI, um, the offset in RSI, and the wince value in RDX. So we're gonna to have to move the file descriptor to RDI, because the file descriptor is currently in RAX, so we're gonna move it to RDI. Then we're going to do an offset in RSI, so the offset, oh, oops, this is the uh, file descriptor. And then RSI will have to move, I always forget which, the, which these things are. So the wince either has, let's look this up. So lseek, so, oops, man to lseek. Here we go, lseek, offset and wince. Uh, the file offset is set to offset, but, oh, wait. Yeah, we're gonna, oh, the wince value is seek end, which I believe is two. Okay, and so the offset will just start as zero. So that means RSI file offset and then, uh, Move R, wait, R, which one is this? So RDI has the file descriptor, RSI has the offset, and RDX has two, which is the um, seek end syscall. Let's see if we've got that right. So then, oh, and then the into rax, we need to have eight. So lseek, there we go. So that gives us that for that syscall. So we have the syscall that we want. Um, RDI has the file descriptor. We have the file r set, rdx seek end, and we're obviously doing an lseek. That will give us a, uh, that will actually return an offset to us of whatever the offset was. Um, let's see, returns, it should tell us the return value. Repositions, file descriptor to offset, according to Wentz, uh, allows the file offset, whatever. I mean, we're starting from zero, so I believe the return value will just be an offset from the beginning of the file. So we can just assume that that's the case. So now we need to save uh, the file size. Uh, now, if we're going to convert the string 
to a number, we wrote, uh, that was the very purpose that we wrote this uh, UI to A and un unsigned it to an alphanumeric or an uh, string. Uh, we're going to give it the string buffer and we have to give it the number to convert in RDI. So we already have a buffer down here uh, that we can use. Yeah, that'll be good to use. We can just use that because we're not going to use it for anything else in this program. So the buffer will be on our RAX and then RDI will be the number to convert. So we'll, uh, by saving the number, save the file size. So move uh, into RDI RAX because RAX has the file, file size and then move into REX buffer. Um, number two string. And then we have call. Uh, we're gonna call UI2A. I believe that's what it is, UI2A, UI2A. So we have uh, the buffer and the file size, and then we call UI2A, and that will convert it to a string. So that means, um, and then REX will actually have the number of characters that we, um, the number of characters that we want. So then we can, uh, oh, wait, convert, save file size. Uh, Mm, this face, uh, actually, let's just move all of this down here, convert the file size to a string. That's pretty cool. And we'll just remove all of this for now. So that'll be good. So convert the file size to a string. So now we've got it converted to a string. And then when we print the file, RAX right now has uh, the, um, RAX has Oh, the number of characters of the string that we converted. So we're going to have to write to console, and writing to a console, we need to give a buffer of the address of the thing that we want to write to, and then the buffer uh, size. Okay, so that means, uh, so REX, um, so that means RDI, um, we need to move. Um, into RDI, REX, which this will be the buffer size, and move into REX buffer, because this is a converted string buffer. Um, so that moves in REX, and then we can do call uh, write console. There we go. So that will print. Um, so what essentially what we're printing is we're going to print out the length of the file. So we can go back up here. We can go back up to the top here, and we can actually just take all of this away, everything except the end. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, we're going to call this with a file. So we're going to have to do um, a file name. So we're going to have to move. Um, into rex a file name and then we'll call read file now of course right now we don't have a file name so we're gonna we're gonna create a constant down here called file name and we're gonna declare bytes and this will be main.asm so we're just gonna read um, uh, we're going to read the this file, right? This literal file that we're creating right now, that's the file that we're going to read as our test file. So we'll remove the file name, then we'll read the file, and that will print out the size of the file, and then we can exit the program. So if we did everything correctly, uh, we should be able to compile this with Phasm. And we did, so now we have a main. Oh, and let's go over here. We're looking for... Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. Let's go into 04. So we're looking for 3401. 
is the number that we want to be printed. Let's see if that, oh, 3401. That's the length of the file. That's pretty nice. Uh, we could try one more thing just to see if it works. Uh, we'll say test.text. This is my file. Uh, this is, whoops, is one more line. And we can see that the length of test.text is 40 bytes. So we should be able to go into our main.asm file. We could go down here and change this to test.text, compile it, and if we run it, we get 40 bytes. So we know that it is actually opening this file, seeking to the end, and uh, printing that number as a string. So success. We did, um, we were able to do it. Whoops. So I'm going to change this back to main.asm and we'll just remove this test file because we don't need that anymore. And that is good enough, I think, for today. We've used enough time. And uh, next time we should be able to uh, complete this operation of of reading a file. We're going to actually learn how to allocate memory dynamically and we'll be able to read this file into that dynamically allocated memory and return that to the user so they can use it however they wish in their program. In our program we're just going to print it out but uh, that that should be it. So until next time.